Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you on this morning. Ah, praise God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy can do it forever. God, I believe in you. There are many who do not believe in God, but Lord, I believe in you. The Bible said that the fearful and the unbelieving shall have their part in the lake of fire. God, I believe in you. I know someone may say, well, we are God. Yes, the Bible said ye are gods, but that's spelled with a lowercase g. In Psalm chapter number 82. But we are not the creator. We are not the immortal God. The God who I believe in is a God who's above all gods. He's our creator. David said that these gods, when he said he are gods, shall die like men. Human beings are also called gods. But we are not the immortal God. We are not the creator. I'm talking about the creator who created the heavens and the earth. When he said, let there be light, and there was light. God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke the world into existence. Oh, mm, Lord Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. God, I believe in you. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. St. John chapter 14, verse 1. When you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. When you believe in Jesus, you believe in God because you said, I and my Father are one. He said, he that have seen me have seen the Father. Let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. When I come again, I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. Thank you, Jesus. That's the great hope that who we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. I'm talking about the great hope. I'm not talking about dope. You don't need no dope. All we need is a great hope. Now, I'm not talking about the Pope. I'm talking about Jesus, the great hope. But believe in him. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. Jesus arose Lazarus from the dead. After he'd been dead for four days, he's the only one who I know who could be late and still be on time. He's an on-time God. Whoa, hallelujah. My sermon today on a YouTube land. I want to thank Beliza Jr. for sending such an awesome blessing to the Cash App Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. May God give you an increase. May God turn your decrease into increase. Ah, when you obey God's holy word and keep God's holy commandments, he said, I make you the head and not the tail. He said, I make you above only and not beneath. If, it's a big if there, you keep God's holy commandments. That means when you obey God's holy word, he'll bless you. David said, I once was young. Now I'm old. David said this about himself. But I never, 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 never seen the righteous forsaken now I receive begging for bread if you live a righteous life he'll supply you every need when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness then all these things shall be added unto you the words of Jesus Christ Matthew chapter number 6 verse 33 my message today God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible. That with God, all things are possible. I want to talk about the story of Hannah. Let's go into the word of God right now. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God.
basic instruction before leaving her the Bible. According to 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 16 and verse 17, when you receive God's holy information in your heart, then God will do a transformation in your heart. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel. Turn with me. Chapter 1, verse 5, verse and verse 6. There was a young woman of God by the name of Hannah. H-A-N-N-A-H, -N -N Hannah. Hannah longed to give birth to a son. However, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5 to verse 6, we read the Lord closed Hannah's womb. Mm, that's deep. Many of you have been barren out there. You want children? It look like you never had children. Many of you have been having, trying to have children with your wife, with your husband. Many of you have had miscarriages. You want children real bad. Nothing wrong with that. Children is a gift from God. As long as you give them to God, we don't want the children to come out wicked. Because the Bible also declares in Psalms chapter 58 verse 3, that they was born wicked and strange in the mother's womb speaking lies already. That's why it's important for the parents to pray and have a relationship with God. We hear Hannah loved the Lord. She had a relationship with God. Hannah longed to give birth to a son. However, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5, verse 6, we read, the Lord closed Hannah's womb. Hannah prayed, asking God to give her a son. Many of you are praying that all around the world. You're saying, Lord, please give me a son. Please give me a daughter. And your womb had been barren. But God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible and give you a child. No matter what the doctors say. God is a God above all doctors. Let's go back to this. God closed her womb. God did this. Why? We're going to find out. The Lord closed Hannah's womb. Hannah prayed, asking God to give her a son. For several years, she's been asking God this. For years. Lord, please give me a son. She cried. Her, her own sister had children. But she had no children. She, she was bitter. Keep going. Hannah felt hopeless. God was not answering her prayer. How many times you been there? How many times you prayed and God was not answering it? Like he was just quiet. Just gazing at you. You knew his presence was there. You said, Lord, I want this. I want that. Everyone else is getting married. And they getting children. This one getting a house. And you're blessing him with a car. And she's like, everyone else around me is successful but me. And you say, Lord, when is my time? Well, Hannah was going through this. The Bible said Hannah felt hopeless. Why did she feel hopeless? God was not answering her prayer. God was not answering her prayer. But God still had a plan. Hallelujah. Tell us when God has a plan. Check this out. She cried to God. She weeped. She was bitter. Lord, why are you not answering my prayer? My, my sister have children. She getting blessed with her offspring. Why not me, God? I tell us when God had a plan. Hannah is not the primary character in the story. Because y'all didn't realize that after a while, God gave Hannah a son. It was the prophet Samuel. Praise God. God called a young child, the prophet Samuel, in the house of Eli. Eli was a judge of Israel, but he had two sons by the name of Hophni and Phoenix. I want to explain this before I go any further. Hophni and Phoenix was wicked. Whereas Eli the priest was a righteous man, but God was not pleased with Eli the priest because Eli the priest never disciplined his sons. He spoiled his children. He knew they was wicked, but he never told them nothing. He didn't tell his sons to repent. He just allowed his sons to tear up the house of God. They kept on fornicating. 
with different women among Israel and Eli the priest never said anything to his sons so God got angry at Eli because Eli the priest never disciplined his sons how many times you saw them bad children in the church and the child is spoiled the mother spoiled the child no your child is bad they're the turn of the church and the mother and father never say nothing see do you know that God get angry when you don't discipline your child the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. So when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Well, Eli the priest did not discipline his son. So God got angry at Eli. Let you know God doesn't like when you spoil your children. Especially when you're supposed to be a man of God or you're a pastor of a church. And yet your own children tearing up the church. And yet you preaching the gospel. God was angry with Eli the priest. So God rose up the prophet Samuel, who was, God bless you, young man. Happy to see you this morning. What a nice car. Look how God blessed that young man. So happy for. Praise God for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God called the prophet Samuel in the house of Eli as a little child, as a boy. He kept hearing the voice said, Samuel, he thought it was Eli the priest calling him. Now, this was Hannah's son. God gave Hannah a son, a prophet. She thought she would never have children. And God gave her a prophet. God called him in the house of Eli. God called him more than once. He said, Samuel. So he went running to the priest. Eli. He said, Did you call me? And he said, No. So he kept coming, he kept hearing the voice. Samuel. So Eli the priest began to discern. It was God who was calling for the young child Samuel. So Eli the priest told the child, next time you hear your name being called, he said, it's the voice of the Lord. He said, next time say yes, Lord. So next time when Samuel heard the voice of God saying, Samuel, he said, yes, Lord, hear him out. God called a little child as to be a prophet already at an early age. God can use a little child at an early age. Like he used young David to slay Goliath. The Bible says the child shall lead them. God raised up the prophet Samuel on Eli's nose. But God was not pleased with Samuel because he never trained and disciplined his sons. The Bible said God struck down Eli the priest and struck him dead because God was not pleased with Eli the priest. And he also destroyed his sons because they were wicked. God don't play. And he rose up the prophet Samuel. Now this was the young man who God gave to Hannah. When she felt that God would never give her a child. Didn't realize God had a plan. Come on, tell us when God had a plan. Even though it looked like God was not answering her prayer. Her sister was being blessed with children. But God gave Hannah a prophet. Oh my God. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. God needed a, God needed a prophet to communicate his heart to the Israelites. Hannah longed to give birth to a son. However, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 5. We read the Lord closed Hannah's womb. Hannah prayed. God bless you, man of God. Happy to see you. That's my Holy Ghost Spanish brother. My minister friend. The Lord closed Hannah's womb. Hannah prayed, asking God to give her a son. For several years, she cried to God and weeped and was bitter. God did not answer at that time. Hannah felt hopeless. She was discouraged. Felt like she was not important. Well, boy, Lord, how you gave my sister children, but not me. I don't understand. So she felt hopeless, understandably. God was not answering her prayer, but God had a plan. Woo! God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible. Tell someone, God has a plan. When she reached the point of desperation, it is y'all, she made a vow to the Lord. Whoa, hallelujah. She made this vow. 
She said, oh Lord almighty, if you will look down upon my sorrow and answer my prayer. See, a lot of times God want to see how persistent you're going to be. Maybe that's why he didn't answer. He want to see how determined she's going to be. She didn't realize that God had a plan to give her the prophet Samuel. God was impressed with her, with her persistency. She made a vow to God. That's what God wanted her to make a vow. Oh, Lordy. Hallelujah. She said, oh, Lord Almighty, if you will look down upon my sorrow and answer my prayer, it is, and give me a son, then I will give back, I will give him back to you. That's what God was waiting for. You heard that, y'all? He would be yours for his entire lifetime. Read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. After, after Hannah returned home, her prayer was answered. Hallelujah. God opened her womb. She conceived, gave birth to a son, and named him Samuel. Hannah asked God for a son, and God gave her a prophet. God answered her prayer. God answered more abundantly then she asked when her heart and God's and God's heart became a perfect match. That's what God was waiting for. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, young men. I'm happy to see y'all today. Look how God bless these young men. I'm happy to see y'all today. You are too blessed to be stressed. and too anointed. God is using these young men of God. Have a good day, young men. Thank you. God bless the young men. That God is raising. I got to encourage the young men and women. God bless you, young man. I see greatness in you. Hallelujah. Have a good day. Thank you, Jesus. God answered Hannah's prayers. God was waiting for Hannah to say that. Hallelujah. You heard that? God was waiting for Hannah to say, Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you, Lord. I offer my son to you. You can offer your daughter to God and say, Lord, use him for the rest of their life. That's what God was waiting for her to pray. And God gave Hannah a son. God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible and work a miracle for you. Woo! God bless you, young man. You, my Amen. God bless the young man. He is passing by. God is going to give you a miracle. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible. Keep on praying. Keep on waiting on the Lord. Many of you, God is waiting for you to make a vow. It's not that God didn't want to give her a son, but he was waiting for her to make a vow to him. That's why he waited. God had a plan. <laughs> Tell someone God has a plan. Because many parents don't offer their children to God. Many of you asking God for children, that's okay. But you're not saying, Lord, if you give me children, I offer them up to you, Jesus. I give my children, God, to you. See, God want to come first. He deserves to come first. He don't want you to put your children above him. Come on. He don't want you to put your husband or your wife above him. But God comes first. There's nothing wrong to want, nothing wrong with wanting to get married. But first, get married to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. When you put God first, when you put God first, he'll be glorified. He'll be blessed. Jesus said, he that loves his father and mother, sister and brother more than me, is not worthy of me. God come first. Hallelujah. When you love Jesus, more than you love each other. That's when you'll see God bless Oh, hallelujah. I feel something right now. That's when you see. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of God is here in the street. God can be everywhere at the same time. Oh, that's when God will begin to bless. When you put God first. That's when God will begin to bless. When you give God your marriage and say, Lord, you be in charge of this marriage. Lord, I give my children to you. God has a plan. Woo! Not just only a plan, but God has a master plan. Oh, I felt that right there. Come on, tell someone God has a master plan. Not just a plan, 
God has a master plan. That's what God is waiting for you, to make a vow to him. And say, Lord, you give me children. Use them for your service. A lot of parents don't pray that. Do we get children? Yes, you're supposed to love your children. Don't molest the child, protect the child. But many of you are worshiping your children. Love your children, but don't worship your children. That's why you're allowing your children to walk over you. Because you're worshiping your family. Love your family, but don't worship your family. Then worship go to God. To God be all the glory. I don't want the glory. To God be the glory. He has been so good. Hallelujah. He gets the glory. God created us to worship him and spirit that in truth. Now God can take what seems impossible and make it impossible. Now that prayer you've been asking God for, God will bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the anointing of God right now. He'll open up your wounds. God will take what seems impossible and make it possible. Lord, I promise if you bless me, I serve you. Ah, Jacob was wrestling with that angel. He said, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. Oh, I feel Jesus. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Ah, hallelujah. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, Lord. Sometimes God want to see how determined we're going to be. He tests our faith. Say, Lord, I've been praying for a long time. And my prayers have not been answered. But make a vow to the Lord. Somebody said, I made a vow unto the Lord. And he heard my cry. He heard my cry. Some of you got children that's dying. They got cancer. They're sick. But say, Lord, Lord, if you heal my son, if you heal my daughter, Lord, I'll testify. I will testify. I tell you your goodness. I'm going to make a promise to you. God wants to make a covenant. Now Jesus will be involved with you and your children. Now God will break that generational curse. That's what God was waiting for Hannah to do. He allowed her to get to that point. That she cried so long. She said, Lord, I make a vow to you, God. She said, if you give me a son, I'll offer up my son back to you, Jesus. God, God, you can have him. God, you bless him. You can have him, Lord, for all his lifetime. And God gave Hannah the prophet Samuel. Ain't that wonderful? And God used Samuel mightily. He was the one who anointed David in the house of Jesse. When the prophet Samuel grew up, he was the one who anointed Saul to be king, who was the first king of Israel. But when Saul rejected God, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and went to David. And God told Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. For among his sons, I have chose the king. A young heart player, a warrior. God chose David. He sent the prophet Samuel, who became the judge of Israel and one of the greatest prophets. Hannah offered her son to God and he belonged to God and God called him at an early age as a child and the Bible said the child shall leave him and God used the prophet Samuel when he grew older to anoint young David to be king and he was the one that God used David to slay Goliath praise God for the prince of peace God can take what seems impossible and make it the possible but make a vow to God so I made a vow to the Lord I'm not going back on that vow. So make a covenant to God, y'all. Some things God wants you to do like that. Make a vow to God. And say, Lord, if you give me children, open up my womb. I will give my children to you, God. We commit ourselves to you, God, so you can get the glory, God, so our offspring can be blessed. Hallelujah. So, God, you can get all the glory. So your child will be blessed. Your daughter will be blessed. Your son will be blessed. Your husband will be blessed. Your wife will be blessed. Because now you belong to Jesus. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, I'll make you above only and not beneath. 
Now God can bless your whole offspring when you make a covenant to God because God wants to be glorified through family. Now you put a smile on his face. Hallelujah. Praise him for it, Chase.